Greetings from Washington, D.C. My name is Dr. Robert Emery. I'm a practicing surgeon at, in oral and maxillofacial surgery, and I'm going to talk to you today about using the X-Guide for an aesthetic implant case. This is a 19-year-old female who is a congenitally missing number 10. She is a high-risk aesthetic case because she has a very high smile line, and we're planning on doing this case with a punch approach only. She, the patient's undergone Invisalign treatment to idealize her aesthetics prior to surgery. She has a thin biotype and she desires an immediate provisional. The prosthetics were done by Dr. Keith Progobin and the orthodontics were done by Dr. John Shefferman. The surgery was done by your words truly. This is a preoperative view of the patient's uh, retracted anterior dentition. You can see the Invisalign attachments in position. This is a close-up view of the surgical site, and you can see the concave nature of the uh, region number 10 that is a region of a congenitally missing tooth, as I said previously. The plan is to fabricate an imaging guide. This is optional with the X-Guide because the X-Guide provides virtual teeth. In this case, the restorative dentist re requested that I use an imaging guide. We're gonna fabricate the X-Clip, which takes a few minutes. The staff does that. One of the nice things to note with the X-Guide is that it works extremely well with Invisalign because the attachments um, provide um, firm, rigid connection with the X-Clip. We're going to take a CVCT with the X-Clip and the imaging guide in place. This takes less than five minutes. We're going to import the case via the network in the office and plan the case. This takes less than five minutes. We're going to calibrate the patient tracker and the handpiece. The staff does this and this takes less than three minutes. In this case, I'm going to extract four-third molars and harvest soft tissue from the maxillary posterior region number 16. Uh, for a subepithelial connective tissue graft, which is going to be concomitant, done concomitantly with the uh, implant placement. <clears throat> the X-clip is going to be placed with the array attached, and the implant will be put into position in less than 20 minutes. One of the ideal things about using the X-guide is that the treatment plan can be altered intraoperatively to account for soft tissue changes. In this case, a connective tissue graft is going to be done, and it's a highly aesthetic case. So I'm going to want to account for vertical changes or vertical uh, uh, intraoperative uh, observations uh, at the time of surgery, and I can change those with the X guide. I'm going to do a subepithelial connective tissue graft via a microflap. We're going to do an immediate provisional and the case will be immediately uh, provisionalized and we're gonna allow it to heal for two months. This is a view of the imaging guide. You can see I've cut the imaging guide away from the region where the X-clip is gonna be placed. You never wanna place an X-clip on top of any provisional restoration or in the region of acrylic provisionals because the X-clip will bond to the acrylic provisionals. This is the first task of the staff when they import the case, and the staff m moves from left to right in the uh, top menu bar in the uh, XOS. They're gonna map the, uh, our, the um, arch form, the staff clicks on three locations, or the doctor can do it, number two, number eight, nine region, and number 15. And the software in the XOS will go ahead and automatically map the arch, and that can be um, finalized by the doctor or the staff. The next step, if desired, is to place a virtual uh, tooth. When there is an imaging guide, this isn't necessary. But when we don't have an imaging guide, what I'll have my staff do is to go ahead and place a virtual tide, uh, excuse, vir, excuse me, a virtual implant in the contralateral site. In this case, that would be number seven.
to measure the ideal size of the actual tooth and then duplicate that with a virtual implant on the other side. In this case, you can look on the bottom right where it says generic in the middle of the screen and the size of the tooth is indicated buccolingual, mesial, distal, and in length. The next step is the treatment plan, the implant. And again, the tasks are indicated in the top screen from left to right, and you'll see the green implant planning is indicated uh, on the top. And in this case, I'm gonna place a three by three parallel wall implant. I prefer to use parallel wall implants in the maxilla because they're ideal for altering the vertical position in the implant whereas tapered implants are not. The next step is to ver visualize the virtual tooth from the occlusal approach. You'll see the arrow on the right with the scissors indicated. If the scissors icon is clicked, it s removes all the slices, the axial slices below the X clip automatically for a quick uh, uh, view from the occlusal uh, aspect of the axial cuts. The next task across the uh, task bar on the top is the calibration of the handpiece, tracker, and body. The uh, menu in front of the staff is, uh, has all the instructions. So the staff, all they have to do is click and follow the instructions. This takes less than two minutes. The next task across the top menu bar is to calibrate the patient tracker. Again, the instructions are listed for the staff. This takes less than one minute. This is a view of myself and my assistant in the uh, surgical uh, field and I'm looking at the X guide. My staff, my first assistant, is looking in the mouth and her job is to make sure that the soft tissues are retracted appropriately. In the case, this case, it take, took less than 10 minutes, or excuse me, 20 minutes to place the implant. This is a interoperative uh, view of the connective tissue graft after it's been contoured. This is a view of the micro flap being developed. I use a number 15 blade and a sharp curette. This is a view of the cinch suture being placed through the micro flap. It will be placed through the flap, through the tissue, back through the flap, and be used, as illustrated in this view, to pull the connective tissue graft through the micro flap. Again, this is a high risk case. You couldn't do this case without guidance not without high risk. And um, again, after this is done, we can tweak the position of the implant because we're using a parallel wall uh, implant. We can force the uh, last uh, view of the implant with the um, X guide and check the depth. This is a view of the connective tissue graft in place. And this is a post-operative view with a superimposition of the pre-op and post-op. My angular deviation from the plan was four degrees. My platform deviation was 0.81. My apical deviation was 0.46. This is within the um, accuracy and precision you would expect with a static guide. With the flexibility, you would not get with a static guide. This is post-operative view with the provisional abutment in place. This is two weeks post-op. The attachments for the Invisalign have been removed, as has been the cinch suture, which you can see a small region of erythema. It's just been removed. Um, and you can see the convex nature of the soft tissue. This is, again, this is a full smile view with the provisional restoration in place. So in summary, we fabricate the imaging guide, which is optional since virtual teeth are available with the X guide and the XOS. We fabricate the X clip, which takes less than five minutes. This is done by the staff in my office. You could have your own staff do it. 
The X clip works very well with Invisalign. The CBCT with the X clip is taken and the imaging guide. Remember, we cut the imaging guide away from the region where the X clip is going to be planned or is placed. The staff in my office imports the case and does the initial tr treatment planning, and then I refine the plan. This takes less than five minutes. We calibrate the patient tracker and the handpiece. Hand my staff does this. It takes less than three minutes. In this case, I'm going to extract four-third molars and harvest soft tissue from site number 16. I'm going to place the X-clip with the array attached and place the implant. This takes less than 20 minutes. And in this case, the ISQ and the torque the ISQ was greater than 70 and the torque was greater than 35, which is ideal for immediate provisionalization. The wonderful thing about dynamic guidance and the X guide is that the interoperative plan can be changed to adjust depth relative to clinical decisions that may need to be made as far as soft tissue height and thickness during surgery. This is not possible with static guides. A subepithelial connective tissue graft was done via a microflap. It was immediately provisionalized and it was allowed to heal for two months. The total time for dynamic navigation and preparation and planning in this case was less than 18 minutes and the time to place the implant under guidance was less than 20 minutes. I hope if you have any questions regarding the use of the X-Guide, you give me a call. The, again, the X-Guide is ideal for high-risk aesthetic cases where you want to adjust the position of the platform through a micro incision, either a punch, or if you're doing, in this case, a subepithelial connective tissue graft. And it works very well with Invisalign. Thank you very much. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to call me.